Hi there and welcome to another set of Holistic 3D YouTube tutorials. This playlist is taken from my newly updated Procedural Train Generation with Unity in 2024 course, which is now live on Udemy and h3dlearn.com. In this set of videos, I will show you how to use Pearl and Noise to set the height of multiple Unity Terrain objects so that the height values show continuously across all of the surfaces. But before we begin, if you are enjoying my tutorials, please show your support by subscribing to this channel. And if you're interested in taking the entire course, then feel free to use this promo code at h3dlearn.com. And as always, the project and code for Unity from these videos will be available to download for Patreon members. All right, so let's get into it. Since the first version of this course, which used Unity, I think it was like 2017 or, or quite a while ago, Unity has added the ability to have multiple terrains. And you can see here in my scene that I've added in multiple terrains. So this is the initial terrain. You can see the orange line that is around the outside. And I've added extra ones on to the sides here. Here. Now what we're going to do in these lectures is to not rebuild everything we've already gone through in the course but to just give you some guidelines on where to go if you wanted to start using multiple terrains and mostly it's going to be so that you have seamless effects between each one. So in this case I've got Pearl and Noise running over these terrains and where the seams are they match quite nicely and then keep going. So all of the effects, splat maps and um, trees, details, all those things you want to actually continue so that you can't see where the individual terrains are. Do keep in mind though, these terrain objects are enormous, so you don't want to be adding too many of them. And if you do, you need some way of managing how to sort of get rid of ones that you can't see at any particular stage. Stage. So what we're going to do in this lecture, first of all, is to set up multiple terrains. So here we are in a brand new Unity scene, just a basic scene. It's got a skybox and a camera and a directional light in it. We're first of all going to create our base terrain. So in the hierarchy, we right click and we go 3D object and we add in a terrain. So there's our terrain that we've worked with before. Now you might have noticed when you've added a train before that you get these uh, highlighted boxes around the outside. This is where you can actually add your extra terrain. So each terrain object has a top, bottom, left and right neighbor that you can access from the actual terrain itself through the script and we will be doing that a little bit later. But first, how do you actually create these particular neighbors? So once you've created your terrain, if you select the terrain over in the inspector, you've got this first little box here and it's got like mountains and a plus sign and a little grid underneath it. Now it immediately tells you how to create a neighbor and that is to click the edges to create neighboring terrain. So if I just click on these edges, then you'll see I get the neighboring terrains. Now what you have to remember in this case, if you want to process a whole bunch of terrains, is that this terrain here has neighbors that are the square neighbors. It doesn't have access to its diagonal neighbors. You'd actually have to access this one and then grab its, you know, left and right neighbors or whichever ones they are if you wanted to affect them. Now, the other thing is with the trains is they're all going to be the same size as far as their settings go. So when they get created, if you take a look at the first terrain that you've created, in this case, it's at zero, zero, zero. This terrain here, which has moved in the negative direction along the X axis is at negative 1000 in the X direction and still zero, zero. That's because the size of our terrains, if we have a look at the settings and just scroll down to the width and the length, you'll see they're set to 1000. So they actually get moved 
so that they're still perfectly matched together in the world space and their locations are going to be offset by the actual sizes of the meshes. Now we're going to create some script that we can actually use to run Perl and Noise over these particular terrains. So in the hierarchy, we're going to right click and add an empty object and call it a terrain controller like that. Now to the terrain controller, you want to add your own script. Now I've created a new script called T controller for terrain controller. Once you've done that, just drag and drop it onto that object. Let's just open it up and have a look. When you first get it, it's going to be obviously empty. Now we're going to pass through and allow for the setting of a whole bunch of variables in here and they will be based on the ones that we've used for our Perl and Noise. So we therefore need Perl and Noise offset, uh, scaling, height, octaves, all of those sorts of things. So at the very top we're going to start with public float Perl and offset x equals zero then we want the same thing for our z so public float perlin offset z equals zero public perlin x oh and we need to make that a float float perlin x scale equals 0 0.01 f actually let's make that zero zero then public float perlin z scale equals 0.001f. Now I'm using these particular values because I know they're going to give us something that we can see immediately which saves you kind of experimenting with finding those values like we did very very early on. Okay so another one public float perlin height scale and I'm going to set that to 0.5 F and public float Perlin persistence let's set that to 8 and finally public int Perlin octaves equals three in this particular case. All right, so we don't want a start and an update in this case because we're not going to actually run this application to get it to work. We want it to update when we change these particular values in the editor. So if you haven't done that before, you can do it with a method called on validate. So without having any of that other stuff as far as the edit editor controller code and the enable in editor mode or those sorts of things that you need to have on other code you can just use this so it's public void on validate now of course these fields aren't going to look nice and pretty like we did when we spent our time creating our editor code but for what we're doing here they will be effective enough all right, so now we have to loop over our terrains and set the Perl and Noise values. Now, instead of doing it on just one terrain, we have to do on all of the terrains that are in our landscape. So we first of all need to loop through all of those. And Unity puts all of the terrains into a very nice little list that we can access. So we're gonna go a for each terrain terrain in terrain dot active terrains with an s that is the array that holds all of those terrains so by looping through here you're looping through each terrain then whatever you've done for your pearl and noise to get that working on one of the surfaces you can do again within here for each of these terrains that you pluck out in each for loop 
So I'm going to leave this as a little challenge for you. Can you? And feel free to go back into your custom terrain and find out how we did it. This is just, remember, basic Perlin noise. We will use the uh, utils function that does the finite Brownian motion inside of here, but just create the very simple code that you need in here in order to set the values for Perlin noise across all of your different terrains. So when you've done that, go along to the next video where I will continue writing up this code for you.